News coming to you live from Algiers. I'm your host, Madame Zian, and here are your headlines. Gaza death toll climbs to 32,975 in the ongoing Zionist assault on the Gaza Strip. Next, the Arab League congratulates Algeria's UN advocacy amid rising tensions in Gaza. Also coming up, Spain reaffirms its commitment to grant Palestine full UN membership. And Senegalese president appoints Osman Onko, a new, uh, an opposition figure, as a new prime minister. And welcome again to our program. Medical sources in Gaza have announced on Wednesday that the death toll since the start of the Zionist aggression on Gaza has risen to 32,975 martyrs, the majority of whom are children and women. The same sources added that the number of injuries has risen to 75,577, while thousands of victims are still under the rubble. Gaza's medical sources also said that the occupation forces committed five massacres against families in the Gaza Strip, resulting in the death of 59 citizens and the injury of 83 others during the past 24 hours. The head of the Hamas Palestinian resistance movement, Ismail Hniya, said that the Battle of Al-Aqsa flood raised hope that cleansing Al-Quds from the occupiers is a historical necessity. In his speech on the occasion the, of the commemoration of International Al-Quds Day, he stressed that Al-Aqsa flood operation revealed that the truth of the Zionist entity has been revealed. <laughs> The occupation has tried in recent years to defeat the resistance on the Palestinian land via Al-Quds and Al-Aqsa Gate. But the resistance retaliated from the Gaza Front through the Al-Aqsa flood, which constituted a strategic strike that brought the conflict to its natural status and removed the mask on all the faces covered with fake peace and clearly showed the truth of the aggressive Zionist entity and its heinous and inhumane crimes. With regard to the progress of the ceasefire negotiations, Henya said that the occupation is still adopting an evasive approach and does not respond to the just demands of the resistance to stop the war and aggression. Let's take a listen. With regard to the ceasefire negotiations in Gaza, the Zionist occupation continues its procrastination and stubbornness and fails to respond to our just demands to end the war and aggression because the occupation government insists on continuing this aggression. We clearly affirm that we are attached to our demands for a permanent ceasefire, for a complete withdrawal from the Gaza Strip, for the full return of the displaced to their homes, for the delivery of all necessary aid to our people in Gaza, for the reconstruction of the Gaza Strip, for the lifting of the siege, and for the conclusion of a respectable prisoner exchange agreement. Secretary General of the Lebanese Hezbollah movement, Hassan Nasrallah, said that the Israeli occupation has not responded to any international call or international law during the six months of war in Gaza. During his speech at a mass demonstration to commemorate Al-Aqsa Al-Quds Day, Nasrallah stressed that the occupation government would not be able to make up for the effects of the strike the Zionist entity was exposed to on the 7th of last October, hailing the, on the occasion the continued steadfastness of the Palestinian resistance in the West Bank and in the Gaza Strip. Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi said that the recent developments in Gaza have shown more than ever 
that the Zionist entity does not adhere to any humanitarian and international principles. In his speech during an event entitled the Quds Platform, Raisi stressed that the occupation's brutal and inhumane practices aim to cover up the internal divisions it is experiencing. Let's take a listen. Iran stands with the Palestinian people in their struggle against the occupying enemy. The recent attack on our consulate in Damascus, a breach of human rights and international law, will not go unanswered. This action highlights the Zionist regime's desperation to conceal its failures and harmful agenda. The military wing of the Islamic Jihad movement, the Al-Quds Brigade, published scenes of its fighters sniping an Israeli soldier from the engineering unit east of Gaza City. Let's watch the following clip. Still within the Palestinian file, the Arab League has commanded Algeria's steadfast efforts within the UN Security Council to address the conflict in the region and advocate for Palestine's full membership in the United Nations. Following an extraordinary session, the League expressed grave concerns over potential Zionist aggression toward the city of Rafah in Gaza, warning of catastrophic consequences for the more one 0.5 million residents and displaced Palestinians residing there. Palestine has once again appealed to the UN Security Council to revisit its 2011 application for full membership in the United Nations amid the ongoing crisis fueled by the Zionist occupation's six-month-long campaign of extermination in Gaza. Hussein Burkan has more details. In a renewed bid for recognition, Palestine's quest for full and unabridged membership in the UN has garnered support from Western nations like Ireland, Malta, Slovenia and Spain, signaling growing international backing for Palestinian statehood. The Palestinian efforts, underscored by the unprecedented turmoil in the occupied territories, received further reinforcement with a letter to the UN Security Council from member states, led by Algeria and other Arab nations affirming their unwavering commitment to advancing Palestine's cause. I affirm that Algeria will once again address the Security Council, following President Abdelmajid Tabung's instructions to advocate for the State of Palestine's rightful position as a fully-fledged and sovereign member within the United Nations. Palestine's latest application builds upon the General Assembly's historical recognition of the servant state of Palestine in November 212, a milestone endorsed by a significant majority of the UN members. However, the pathway to full membership requires a two-thirds majority vote in General Assembly, following a positive recommendation from the Security Council. Against the backdrop of Algeria's non-permanent membership in the Security Council, President Abdel Majid Taboun has underscored Algeria's steadfast commitment to Palestine's rightful place in the international community. The renewed push for Palestinian UN membership reflects a collective determination to uphold justice and dignity for the Palestinian people. Spain has reaffirmed its commitment to recognizing Palestine as a sovereign state with plans to grant, its full, to grant it full UN membership. Spanish Foreign Minister José Manuel Álvarez, speaking during a NATO foreign minister's meeting in Brussels, reiterated his country's intention to extend diplomatic recognition to Palestine by July, echoing statements made by Spanish Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez. El presidente ha sido muy claro, nosotros 
The Prime Minister's stance is unequivocal. We will extend recognition to Palestine as a fully sovereign state, akin to all other members within the United Nations. President Abdel Majid Tabun received a call from his Palestinian counterpart, Mahmoud Abbas. The Palestinian head of state expressed gratitude to Algeria for its unwavering support for the Palestinian cause, particularly regarding the recent UN resolution. And President Tabun reiterated Algeria's steadfast support for justice and rights of the Palestinian people. They also agreed on a visit by the Palestinian Prime Minister and Foreign Minister to Algeria after Eid al-Fitr. In the same context, Algerian aircrafts continue to land at Al Arish Airport in Egypt as part of the Airlift Initiative to provide humanitarian assistance to the Gaza Strip. On Wednesday, another Algerian Air Force plane arrived at Al Arish Airport transporting 22 tons of Algerian humanitarian aid bound for the Gaza Strip. This aid package, comprising food, medical supplies, and tents, will be transported to the Rafah border, border crossing through coordinator efforts between or coordinated efforts between Algerian authorities and their Egyptian counterparts. Istamsid has been to Al Arish Airport in Egypt and has more details. Another plane of the Algerian People National Army laden with humanitarian aid landed here at the Al Arish Airport in Egypt. Having departed from Bouferic Airport in Algeria, this flight is considered another crucial step in Algeria's support for Palestine and specifically towards Gaza. The plane, as you can see right behind me, is loaded with 22 tons of humanitarian aid by the Algerian Red Crescent Association, consisting mainly of food supplies and offers as well a lifeline to the Palestinians in Gaza, who amid the 18-year-long blockade and the ongoing Zionist genocidal war against the Strip for the sixth consecutive month. The continuing process of the humanitarian aerial bridge Support from Algeria to Gaza underscores again Algeria's unwavering commitment to the Palestinians and highlights the strong bond between the two nations. Islam said, All 24 News, Al Arish Airport, Egypt. Algeria's ambassador to the United Nations, Ammar bin Jama, emphasized that the obstruction of aid from reaching the Gaza Strip exposes children to the conflict and its consequences. He cited the plight of Gaza's children as a poignant illustration of the situation. Let's take a listen. Children are affected out of proportion by armed conflict, especially by the sixth grave violation condemned by the Security Council. Children should not be trapped in conflicts and denied a lifeline. Let this meeting be a catalyst for action. Let us hold perpetrators accountable and prioritize a safe access to humanitarian assistance in order to ensure that the needs for, of children in armed conflict are met. Together, we can build a world where children are not anymore victims of war, but beacons of hope for a peaceful future. International condemnation is swelling after the occupation killed seven aid workers from a U.S.-based food charity founded by a renowned celebrity chef. Leaders from many Western countries are now urging the occupation to respect international law as it is launching a war in Gaza that has proven to be one of the deadliest for humanitarian aid workers. Nabil Khazini has a report. The sea convoy is returning to Cyprus after it would have normally docked off Gaza's port to deliver aid if the occupation hadn't targeted aid workers inside this trip. The ship is back carrying with it 240 tons of food for people leaving behind an entire population living in despair. <laughs> The suffering of the Palestinian people continues as Israel has created a crisis for them. Those from the world's central kitchen were providing aid, and Israel's goal 
is to hold any assistance reaching the Palestinian people by targeting foreigners and the World Kitchen Group to stop all aid. Today, the war is aimed at starving the Palestinian people. Israel's objective is to starve and expel them from their land. This is what they want. The occupation's indiscriminate airstrikes on Gaza have killed on Monday a group of seven aid workers, most of whom were foreign nationals from the charity World Central Kitchen. This has elicited a horrified global response. In the UK, the country that lost three of aid workers in the attacks, the British government is facing growing political pressure to stop selling weapons to the occupation. Media polls suggest that 56% of British people are in favour of this ban. All of the British public can see the scenes coming out of Gaza, children lying in rubble, deep concerns being made about international human rights law, and for all of those reasons, that advice should be published. Uh, and if it is the case that international law has been contravened, then it's absolutely right that offensive arms are suspended to Israel. For now, aid remains scarce and the ways it gets into Gaza are reduced. But what could a drop of aid do in an ocean of despair and need? And now moving on to other developments, Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi has pledged retaliation following an airstrike by the Zionist regime on the Iranian consulate in Damascus, Syria. Describing the attack as an act of frustration and impotence, Raisi asserted during the Al-Quds platform event that such aggression against Iran will not go unanswered, highlighting the Zionist entity's attempts to conceal its failures and human rights violations. Regrettably, those who falsely champion human rights have remained shamefully silent. Not only have they failed to halt the Zionist regime's killing machine, but they also openly and covertly aid and abet these atrocities, particularly the United States. America is unquestionably complicit in the crimes perpetrated by the Zionist regime in Gaza. Algeria strongly condemned the aerial bombardment that targeted the Iranian consulate building in the Syrian capital, Damascus. In a statement released Wednesday, the Algerian foreign ministry pointed out that Algeria expresses its strong condemnation of the criminal act, which is considered a blatant violation of international laws concerned with the sanctity of diplomatic and consular missions, in addition to being a serious infringement on the sovereignty of the sisterly Syrian Arab Republic. The same source added that Algeria extends its sincere condolences and sympathy to the families of the victims wishing a speedy recovery to the injured. The statement also says that Algeria renews its full solidarity with the Islamic Republic of Iran as well as with the Syrian Arab Republic in, in the face of this blatant aggression that threatens to escalate the situation and deepen the state of insecurity and instability in the entire region. And Algerian Minister of Foreign Affairs, Mr. Ahmad Attaf, received a phone call from the United Nations Secretary General Special Representative for West Africa and the Sahel region, Leonardo Santos Simao. A statement from the Algerian Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the national community abroad said that the two parties exchange visions and analyses regarding developments in the situation in the Sahel Saharan region, where they also reviewed ways and prospects for enhancing coordination. Between Algeria and the United Nations to contribute to addressing common challenges faced by the countries and peoples of the region at the political, economic development and security levels. In Senegal and in the wake of his swearing-in ceremony, newly inaugurated Senegalese President Basirou Djomaifai has appointed Osman Sonko as Prime Minister, a prominent opposition figure who played a significant role in Fai's ascent to power, expressed gratitude for the President's trust and pledged to swiftly form a new government to serve the nation. Russian Deputy Prime Minister Alexander Novak announced that his country has succeeded in redirecting all of its oil exports 
to new markets after the latter face various forms of obstacles within the framework of Western sanctions. Novak wrote in an article published in the Russian magazine Energy Policy that the markets of the Asia-Pacific region included 80% of the total oil exports and 53% of Russian oil derivative exports. More international news with Mohamed Khatil. Taiwan's biggest earthquake in at least 25 years killed nine people on Wednesday and injured more than 900, while 50 workers traveling in minibuses to a hotel in a national park were missing. Some buildings tilted at precarious angles in the mountainous, sparsely populated county of Hualien, near the epicenter of the 7.4 magnitude quake, which struck just offshore at about 8 a.m. local time and triggered massive landslides. The earthquake hit at a depth of 15.5 kilometers as people were headed for work and school. Many residents who dared not to stay at home overnight were accepted at temporary shelters. Rural communities in South and Central Mexico battled the flames on Tuesday as dozens of wildfires raged boosted by a nationwide drought. Local media reported that four fires ravaged the central state of Mexico. In the state of Mexico, residents worked for hours to extinguish a fire that originated in a cornfield. According to Mexico's Forest National Commission, there were 71 active fires on Tuesday. At least one confirmed tornado ripped through Rockdale County in Georgia. Aerial footage recorded on Wednesday showed extensive damage to houses and trees. Cleanup efforts were underway as of Wednesday, local media said. Topple trees knocked down power lines, and nearly a third of Rockdale County suffered power outages, Georgia Power reported. A giant panda cub of around four months old has recently been captured by infrared cameras installed at a natural reserve in southwest China's Sichuan province, marking the first time to spot a giant panda cub of so young age in the local region. Video clips taken by infrared cameras show that the four-month-old panda cub was closely following an adult mother panda strolling in the snow-covered woods in the Bayang Provincial Nature Reserve. The little panda cub was seen stumbling into the camera footage with the short but adorable legs. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for tuning in to the Midnight News. That was it for tonight's edition. If you miss any part of it, you can always check it on our social media platforms. Thank you very much. Have a good night and bye-bye for now.